Hey guys, this is packet eight. We have uh, two, nine and 10 to do, so let's do it. Um, a reminder, if you uh, had me today on Monday, it, the packet eight and then nine and then 10. If you have me um, on Tuesday this week, you already had packet eight, so you'll have packet nine on Tuesday. And on Thursday, you will have packet 10. Your test is Monday and Tuesday. So this Saturday, Saturday for bonus points, you can come to the library. And I would suggest staying for at least an hour. So like um, we'll be available from eight to noon. So you could stay from nine to 10 or from 10 to 12. Anytime between eight to 12. And I would suggest you coming because you should be studying over the weekend no matter what you should study over the weekend. So why not come and study with some of your friends and get some bonus points, right? They'll have snacks, drinks, things like that. Meet us in the library. Okay. So um, whether it was me today or Mr. Corson on Friday, we reviewed um, properties of functions, zeros of quadratics, and exponential functions. So let's do a few to just kind of fill in the blanks here, right? This one says... Given this function, does the exp what does this expression tell you about the graph? Rewrite the function in, that's intercept form, and what does this function tell you about the graph? Okay, so we know that this tells us that it would meet it at the number two. So we know that from our graphic organizer that this is our y-intercept. So that is what it tells us about the graph. It tells us the y-intercept. Then it says, rewrite the function. Oh, it also tells us if it's smiling or frowning. So it tells us if it's this or if it's that, right? And so we know since that's a negative, then written in this form, it tells us um, that it is a frown, right? So now it says, rewrite it in this form. All right, so to do that, I'm going to complete the square. Now I could do x is equal to negative b over 2a, right? And then plug um, x in to find y. Uh, but, it, but it might be a little more complicated with this negative sign, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna complete the square here. So I'm gonna factor out a negative. So I get x squared minus 6x minus 2. Um, right, and then this would be x minus 3 squared, with a negative on the outside, and I still have this plus 2 here, right, so... What I have here is negative three times negative three is nine. So technically I've added a negative nine to the left. So that means I have to add a negative nine to the right. So I'm gonna subtract, right, hold on. And now I'm gonna get it in this form. So it looks like a is negative one, right? And I have x minus three squared. And then I've got to get this, this one back over so I can see. So plus 9, plus 9. So that makes this 11. All right, so this is in this form now. What does this form tell us? It tells us our vertex. All right, so our vertex here would be at positive 3, 11. 3, 11. Now that doesn't fit on the graph here. Um... But, uh, you know, hey, right? Again, we could also do it the way we did before. So we have x is equal to negative b over 2a. So negative b, b would be so negative 6 over 2 times negative 1. So we would have um, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. And so we knew that. And again, we can plug this back in. So we have negative x squared. So instead of x, I'm going to plug in the number 3. So negative 3 squared plus 6 times 3 plus 2. So we have negative 9 plus 18 plus 2. So what is this here? Negative 
9, 10, 11. All right? So I got the same answer, right? The vertex is 3, or x is 3, y is 11, y is 11. We ended up getting y is 11. Graph the function and label all the key features. Okay, so it doesn't look like I can do that because it won't fit on there, 311. So I'm going to have to have these count by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? So if we graph this, I'd go over 3, and then up 11 would be here. So there's the vertex, right? And then I'd go over 1, down 1, over back 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, over 2, down 4. So this is our U. Again, we know that our vertex or our intercept is at 2. So this cross is at 2. And this vertex is a maximum at... Um, 11. Nice. Okay. I'm going to skip what type of graph will be created. Oh, 2 is kind of interesting. So we see x is in the exponent. So we're going to put, say, exponential. We see x is just to the power of 1. So that would be linear. x is in the exponent. So that's exponential. I see little two, that makes a U, that's quadratic, right? And then X, I only have one X, so that's linear. Nice, right? All right, now it says graph the function three to the power of X. So this is exponential, meaning we know it takes off like a rocket. What type of function is this? Exponential, because the X is in the exponent. Is this function an example of growth or decay? So we see all positive numbers. So if we graphed this, and this is x, and this is g of x, if we make x 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. If we make this 1, that's 3 to the power of 1, which is 3. And if we make x 2, 3 squared would be 9. So you see how this would grow pretty quickly. So 3 cubed would be 27. Exponential growth grows exponentially. We're not doing plus three every time, we're doing times three. All right, so if this was a number sequence, we could call this geometric. So this geometric, this number is growing by multiplication. Okay, are there any intercepts? Okay, so if we set this equal to zero, or when we set zero, x is zero, we get y1, so 0, 1, right? So that's a y-intercept, right? Are there any x-intercepts? Meaning, when could this be? When could this be 0? So if I set this equal to 0, 3 to the power of x, hmm, So I have this number, right? Then I have 1, 3. Then I have 3, 27. I'm already off the page. So I believe it's going to take off like this. Right. I don't think I can get lower than that. So we could go to Desmos. Let's, let's go to Desmos and just explore this a little bit. Let's add Desmos. Or we could do it in our graphing calculator too, right? So let's graph together 3 to the power of x. Voila. So it doesn't look like it's touching the x-axis. It just kind of skates on the bottom there. So we notice each of our points here. 327. There it is. 327. I see that number. 327, and this number, 3, 1, right? And this number, 0, 1. Nice. Okay, so let's go back to our drawing. Are there any 
So we'll have to say no x intercepts. Now it says question four. Graph the linear function given that the x intercept is 3, 0, so that'd be 3, 0, and the y intercept is 0, 5, 0, 5. So if it's a linear function, that a linear if line is the straight between two points, right? So if we took a straight edge, we know that this is the line, right? We essentially know that if it's straight, we knew the equation of this line because we can say, right, y is equal to mx plus b. Well, we know the intercept. We know the intercept is 5, and we know the slope. So let's zoom in. I fell 5, I ran 3. So I fell five, I ran three. That's our intercept. Cool, right? All right, so let's see if there's any other pieces missing. It looks like we left some missing here on the right. Uh, we did most, most of the sheet here. And oh, it looks like we did most of the back. Okay, so let's, let's investigate some on this page here. It says, Lisa solves a quadratic equation shown below. Which of the best describes her error? Okay, so she has an equation here. She did that by hand. She set one equal to six and the other equal to six. All right, so it said the last line should say x equal two or x equal eight. Interesting. The six should have been subtracted from both sides. This is where I'm thinking, I've never done this before, where I, I set it equal to zero. So I feel like this should be subtracted to both sides. So you have zero equal x squared plus 2x minus 14. I, I personally feel like that's what you should have done. Then you can graph, do this by hand. All right, it said only the x plus four and the x minus two should be set equal to six, not both factors. Mm, that doesn't sound right. All right, then it says six, two, and negative eight should be simplified, three, one, and four. No, okay, so we definitely are gonna pick B. That's, that's, our, that's our final answer. So when we're factoring, we have to set it equal to zero and then factor. Okay, so what are the zeros of the function here? So it looks like I can divide each one by three. So we'll get, and if I set this equal to zero, right? If I'm dividing by three, that's still zero. So that's my function. Um, so I get x squared minus one x minus six. And if I factor, that would be negative three positive two, right? This and this added together would be a negative one. And when we multiply negative three times positive two, we get a negative six. Okay, so what would be the zeros of this? Well, if this is zero, then either this is equal to zero or that is equal to zero. Because to something to equal zero, then either this number or that number had to be zero. So we'll set this equal to zero and this equal to zero. Right? And we get positive three and negative two. Nice work. All right, let's do a little here and then do we have just one more on the bottom? Yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna do this pool one. Okay, a pool measuring 20 meters by 30 meters. Okay, so this is the pool part, 20 by 30. Is surrounded by a path of uniform width as shown in the figure. If the area of the pool and the path combined is 1656 square meters, what is the width of the path? 
All right, so they made the width of the path x. They also helped us that this would be 20 plus 2x, because we have an x and an x here. And that this width would be 30 plus 2x, because we have an x and an x there. All right, so what we have here is the area of a rectangle is base times height, right? So the area of a rectangle is base times height, right? We know the area if this rectangle is this. We're given our base is 30 plus 2x. And we know our height is 20 plus 2x. And we know these have to equal this because that's what they told us, right? So um, what is the width of the path? We can solve for our x's. Well, the first thing I want to do is I noticed that I can divide this by two, right? At this, I can factor out a two. So this would be two times 15 plus x. And I can factor out a two here. This would be 10 plus x. All right, so that would probably be the first thing I'd want to do. Then I can divide by two and divide by two, right? And that would cancel. Okay, so this would clean things up a little bit. I also think I could call it x plus 15 or 15 plus x, either way, that order doesn't matter. So that looks a little more normal to me. So I still over here need to do 1656 divided by four. Okay, so let's do that part. 1656 divided by four. No, why did I pick that? I thought that was my calculator. Let's find my calculator. 1656, 1656 divided by four. 414. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply this. It would be x squared plus 15x, right, plus 10x, plus 150. We get, all right, so we get x squared plus 25x plus 150 is 414. Okay, so if we subtracted this 414, so 150 minus 414, 150 minus 414, 264, 264. So we get x squared plus 25x minus 264. Let's just double check that, yep. 264. So using, I could factor this by hand, but this is a pretty big number. So I'm going to use the quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that'd be negative 25 because that's b plus or minus 25 squared or 625 minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative 264, all over two times one or two. Okay, so our big number here is four times 264, yeah. Four times 264, 1056. So it's negative 25 plus or minus the square root of 1056 divide by two. All right, so what is the square root of that? 32.5. So I get negative 25 plus 32.5 divided by two and negative 25 minus 32.5 divided by two. Now this one is called extraneous because I can't have a negative width of a pool. Okay, this one is a doable, 32.5 minus 25 and then divide by two. So minus 25 and then divide by two. Okay, so the width of my path is 3.75 feet. Okay, and that makes sense. The width of a sidewalk is 3.75. So this is a pretty reasonable width. So X is 3.75.
meters. Oh, that's even wider. It's about nine feet. All right, gang, thanks for joining us. See you next time.